Three different types of depression are major depression, which is also known as clinical depression. This type of depression makes it difficult to carry out daily tasks for most, as most depressions do, such as studying, working, eating, sleeping, etc. It can, it can occur once or multiple times in a person's life. Psychotic depression. This occurs when a severe depression illness includes a form of psychosis. The psychosis can include hallucinations such as hearing a voice telling you that you are no good. Situational depression, also known as adjustment disorder, occurs when a person has difficulty coping with or adjusting to a major life change. These are two different types of pictures of depression. On the, uh, the left, it shows what depression does, and on the right, it has a picture of someone who doesn't have depression versus someone who does have depression, which is a major decrease in the amount of chemicals in the brain. And then I have two videos to show you. But for those not able to see their depression as an illness, it is really important to show what is actually happening inside the head. Examining the brain through imaging is a relatively new area of science. It's only been studied over the past 15 years or so. I've come to the University of Manchester, one of the main centres in the UK for brain imaging. The part of the brain responsible for memory and emotion is the hippocampus. It is here that depression shows up. What's fascinating is that the hippocampus in depressed people behaves differently than the hippocampus in those without the illness. And so this is a cut through the brain and I've just outlined in black the areas which were... Professor Ian Anderson is leading the research. There's been quite a, a number of studies which have suggested that people who are depressed don't just have an alteration in how the brain's working, but also actually in the structure of the brain. So there's, and the hippocampus has been one of the areas that's been most found to be smaller in people with depression. Smaller? Smaller. So you've got the, the hippocampus, mm. which is this part of the brain which deals with emotion. Yes, and memory, yes. And, and if someone develops depression, mm. are you telling me part of the hippocampus, the grey matter, shrinks? Well, that's what we've found. So a bit like if you don't exercise, your muscles shrink. It Maybe the same happens with the brain. If, you're, if a bit of the brain that's important uh, isn't functioning so well, that area uh, becomes essentially smaller. Professor Anderson explained to me how his studies show this change in the brain and how treatment affects it. Our group of patients were people who had been depressed on average about five months and the sort of people who'd be getting treatment from their general practitioner. And what we found was that if we looked at the hippocampus, we found a striking decrease in the amount of gray matter, that's the part of the brain that's got nerve cells and the connections between nerve cells in, uh, in people who are depressed. And this was about a 25% decrease. So it's a quite a striking and a staggering uh, change, in fact. Well, you're dead, right? It's staggering. So. People with depression in your study had 25% less grey matter than those non-depressed people. In, in, in this area of the hippocampus, that's right. Depression is a disorder that afflicts over 10% of the world's population, but we as a society know little about it. Stereotypes tell us that depressed people are weak, unless they happen to be a tortured artist. It can be difficult to understand depression because it's invisible. It's a disorder defined by thoughts, behaviors, and feelings, rather than obvious symptoms like vomiting, rashes, or fever. 
Those who have experienced depression are all too familiar with comments from misguided friends such as snap out of it or just get up and do something. Even those with depression might have a hard time understanding what they are experiencing and they often blame themselves for not being able to snap out of it. To understand what depression really is, we need to talk about symptoms. First of all, depression has symptoms related to how someone feels. These symptoms include nearly constant feelings of sadness, anger, guilt, or hopelessness. Next, there are symptoms related to behavior. They include social withdrawal, a lack of energy, low motivation, poor concentration, sleep problems, or significant changes in appetite. Finally, symptoms related to thoughts include poor self-esteem, thoughts of suicide, and loss of interest in regular activities. Symptoms of depression must last at least one week, and they are often cyclical. This means that the symptoms can come and go over a period of months or years. A person who experiences depression once is likely to have future episodes. It can be difficult to think of these thoughts, feelings, and behaviors as symptoms. To many of us, because they are in our head, they can seem like decisions. It can seem like someone who is depressed has chosen to be lazy and sleep all day, or they have decided to stop spending time with friends because they have a bad attitude. But remember, what's in our head isn't imaginary. Our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors are influenced by a complex series of chemicals in our brains. The exact causes of depression are poorly understood, but we have an idea of factors that influence the illness. We know that changes to hormones in the brain, called neurotransmitters, can have a major effect on depression. Many medications used in the treatment of depression work by increasing the levels of these neurotransmitters. We also know that genetics play an important role in depression. People who have a family history of depression are more likely to experience the disorder. Just because your parents had depression doesn't mean you necessarily will, but the chances are greater. Finally, we know that environmental factors play a role in depression. Living in poverty, experiencing a traumatic event, or other stressful situations may trigger the disorder. That being said, depression does not always have a clear trigger, which often leads to a person not understanding why they feel so down. Treatment for depression usually includes psychotherapy and medication. Either can work on its own, but a combination of both medication and therapy has been found to be the most effective. In summary, depression is a disorder that's widespread but poorly understood. The symptoms can negatively affect a person's thoughts, feelings, and behavior to a debilitating degree. However, treatments that include medication, psychotherapy, or a combination of the two can help to manage to eliminate the symptoms of depression. Multiple treatments for depression include talk therapy, medications, usually antidepressants or what the video has mentioned. Cognitive behavioral therapy helps you become aware of negative thinking so you can view challenging situations better. Shock therapy in extreme cases is used when depression is too severe for medication and therapy. Antidepressants may take weeks to work and may cause elevated moods. Medications include Lexapro, Zoloft, Paxil, Prozac, and many more. Color association with depression is usually when people have depression, they associate themselves with the color or object. Speaking from personal preference, my color was black or blue. Those colors help me feel as if I could portray my feelings to the world around me. The colors usually range from light gray to black or dark colors. They're considered metaphors for moods. Depression can lead to suicide or suicidal thoughts. Consider a possible complication of depressive illness in combination of, a, of other risk. Suicidal thoughts and behaviors can be symptoms of moderate to severe depression. Now I'm gonna tell you about my struggle with depression. I've, de I've been depressed since I was in middle school. De what led to depression was being bullied and family factors. I've been diagnosed with situational depression, which is where 
any situation can cause depression. I've had multiple, multiple situations that are still continuing to this day that have caused depression. Thank you.